Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to 3G's Garage. I'm Greg. Uh, got a little video put together for you guys today. Um, Keegan and I went to uh, a sled pick that uh, almost never happened. So it turned out to be really cool. Um, I responded to an ad on Craigslist for a, I believe it was a 74 Yamaha CS5. Um, it's a little 200 two-stroke uh, street bike. I just thought it was really cool. It was mint condition. And um, that bike ended up getting sold, but I kind of asked a few more questions. The guy sent me a picture of a couple other, he had some other bikes for sale, which I wasn't really interested in. But when he sent me pictures of them, there was a couple of, uh, snowmobile tracks in the background and the way he worded his ad it made it sound like he had a lot of stuff and he needed to get rid of it ASAP. The guy's retiring, he did have a ton of stuff. Um, unfortunately we didn't take too much video uh, there but uh, we can you know we'll uh, show you guys the clips of it and uh, I think you guys are really going to enjoy this so check it out. Uh, that is this Flaris SS or Cutlass? Oh, Cutlass what that? I don't know what they had like four uh, different yeah. names for those. Actually, it's an SS right here. Yeah. Here is one that was. Uh, yeah, right. Is this anybody? Like, Suzuki. Yeah, there's a price. <sighs> Sleds everywhere. <laughs> The hoods and the sleds are yeah, endless. All different kinds of stuff here. Hoods. Yeah. Too old for what we got, but we, we found two two gems in the mix. Little Bravo yeah. There. yeah, this guy's also coming home with us. Yep, this one. Super stinger back there. Was this El Tigre? Yeah, El Tigre, 5,000. It's a liquid. Is that a liquid? Yeah. Tube? Oh, it's yeah. bent up in the front. Guys, getting rid of it all. We came and came and picked picked out the good stuff apparently this guy was restored not that long ago and couldn't couldn't pass on it so i mean she's a she's a peach look at that that's a beauty yep took uh took a couple of the yamahas out here there weren't many but i mean there's just they're just stacked in here. The chaparral. The sting. I mean, I don't even know what this is. This is real old. Look at the bumper on that. Is this snow? Something? Lots of Arctic cats. Mercury. This guy here. Ball of ski here. I mean, a guy could spend all day going over all these sleds and hoods and whatnot, but I mean, they are just everywhere in here. 78 is also in good condition. Lots of, lots of real old stuff. Like that has a tag from 75 on it. JLO motor. 
heart attack. Crazy. I mean, you look at all, you see all the hoods and you just think, think about how many sleds were parted out that didn't make it into the barn. Let's see what's under this cover here. This guy up. Look at that. Check that out. That thing is nice. Yeah, like I said, the guy said, yeah, we bought these from, said they all got to go. Whether they go to the scrapyard or they go to a good home, they're, they're all leaving. clips of the, the pick that we went on like I said we'd like to have uh, shot a little bit more video but it was kind of like go 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 and the guy just had so much stuff I mean he had four-wheelers he had pontoon boats he had golf carts I mean he just had everything so um, I think you saw the two exciters getting loaded up in the clips but uh, after that happened I kind of had my eye on this. Uh, it's an 01 SX Viper. Um, I believe, I'm not sure if it's a 600 or a 700 uh, triple cylinder. Uh, we did find the center cylinder is gacked on the thing. It's one of the rings is hanging up. So um, the engine, yeah, the engine's tight. It does move back and forth a little bit, but uh, yeah, so it's the, black headed triple cylinder um, one question that I have for you guys if any of you guys have one of these sleds at home this one has a digital display on it is there a way I can power that up by connecting a battery to the harness somewhere or somehow I know it'll go on when you fire it up but obviously this one doesn't run so um, the main, I don't really know what we're going to do with this, but one of the things, if you've seen some of our other videos, we love these seats and these seats in really good shape go for like 200 to 250 bucks. If you want a new cover for them, they're like 250 bucks. So, um, this sled had a seat that was in perfect shape. And I think the initial plan here is to use this seat on the GPX build next fall. So, um, you know, we, we saw that and I was like, okay, this thing was cheap enough to justify that. If, if I said, if I sold the seat for 200 or 250 bucks, that's over half of what I paid for this sled. So, but I don't know how many miles are on it. Aside from that, the thing's in really nice shape. It's got registration from 2021. So, I mean, honestly, it wouldn't take much to get it, probably just put a top end in it and you know, you could be back on the trails with this thing. And these are nice, really fun sleds. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the, the plan is, but we definitely wanted the seat for sure. So you saw these two guys getting picked up. Uh, and of all those sleds, man, there was like a hundred of them. I just don't know the market on old Johnson's and Chaparral's and 
scorpions like I do the Yamahas. I mean, we just have tons of these things. So happened that the guy had these two. These were like the only two Yamahas that were there that were worth anything. And man, this 80 is just a peach, man. This thing is so nice. This one's got 5,400 kilometers on it and it is beautiful. It's a really, I took the time to wipe it down a little bit um, before we, you know, went ahead and started shooting this video, but it, this, this is probably the, the nicest sled, the nicest vintage sled we have. And when I saw it, I just thought to myself, you saw our video on the SRX pick and I kept the 80, that 80, and we had the 79, but I thought, man, this is a perfect match made for the 80 SRX and to have an 80 Exciter uh, with it. I just, I had to have it. So I probably don't need it. Like I don't need most of these, but uh, you know, I, I had to have it. I think, you know, the plan for this will be just go through the fuel system because it stinks really bad. The last registration on it is from 2005. And by the smell of the gas tank, I would say that that's probably the last time it ran. I mean, this yeah. thing is just gorgeous. Like the old saying, the camera doesn't do it justice on this one. Is right. like, I mean, the, the belly pan's beautiful. The sides, you know, the sides on these aluminum pans usually get dented in, and this one's nice and straight. Everything else on the chassis is really straight. It's missing a handle, a grab handle for the, the back passenger. But otherwise, man, it's, it is a, a wonderful example. And I yeah. certainly couldn't pass pass the thing up. So, um, and then we got this. Grab this '78. Um, I don't know. I'm a sucker for these. So, any chance I get to to bring one home, I just have a hard time walking away. So, um, you know, I, if it wasn't for how nice this one is, I would be raving about this sled because this is a really nice little '78 Exciter as well. It's a full, they're both 440s. Um, this one only is showing 3,400 uh, kilometers on the odometer. So, I mean, not not a ton of use on it over the years. The chassis is really nice and straight. Motor pulls over. Came with the original owner's manual with it, with notes and stuff in it. I mean, it was just a neat, a really neat uh, place to pick a couple sleds up. I mean, the guy was super nice and... I mean, you could spend all day going over all the sleds there. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's it's hard to know a lot about a lot of things, and he had a lot of stuff there, and these were the ones that I felt most comfortable buying because we know these the best. There were there were these two, there was a Bravo, and then there was an Inviter and an Ovation, and yeah, that's they, all he had yeah, for they vintage. Had a, they had a Bravo. Cost. They had a nice little ovation that I kind of wanted to buy, but it needed a track. And I just, I don't know. I, you can't take them all home. So someone, someone will, I'm sure two dozen more people will walk through that barn and most of those sleds will, you know, a yeah. good bit of them will find a good home. So and just by chance, because I asked, he hadn't posted or listed any of the sleds yet. So, but because I asked, he, told me I, you know, he was planning on selling them and I could look them over and, you know, that was, it was just kind of a dream thing. You know, I guess the moral of the story is don't ever forget to ask if, if somebody has other things for sale, if you see something cool out there and, uh, it sells and you don't get to it or whatever, don't be afraid to ask the guy if he's got more stuff because half the time they do people just collect things and, and, uh, you know, you happen into you happen into stuff like this. Our two videos here on buying sleds or whatever kind of went the same way. I just asked what else the guy had, and uh, we got some really cool stuff out of it. So, um, yeah, that's kind of kind of how you do it. Carry carry a small wad of cash in your pocket and and be ready for anything. So take as much junk home as you can. Well, yeah, <laughs> I mean, you got to have a limit, but at the same point. So yeah, that, I guess that's it. Just uh, glad you guys were able to come along with us. And like I said, I wish we could have got a little more footage for you, but um, take it for what it is. Uh, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think I should do with this sled. 
Uh, I don't really have room for another exciter. That one is going to be my trail rider. Um, Keegan's got a trail rider in Ticer, so, you know, I don't know if I should just get this one running and sell it, sell it as is, race it. I hate to race it, but let me know what you guys think. Otherwise, thanks a lot and catch you next time.